today is Drew Jarvis, one of our most seasoned, most uh, qualified Revit specialists, also one of our CTC uh, software uh, evangelists who's an expert on this uh, Hive solution. So we're going to be talking today on the third part of our uh, CTC webinar series is uh, Revit template and strategies for distributing your templates and project standards via Hive. Um, and again, not just that type of uh, content, but even other type of contents that uh, Drew is going to be uh, presenting to us uh, during the technical demonstration. Uh, my name is Dan Coogan. Some of you may are familiar with me. Um, otherwise, if you have never met you before, you know, always hope, hoping we can speak at some point. Uh, I'll give you a quick introduction about SolidCAD and then we're going to jump right into uh, the technical demonstration. So quickly, just understand who SolidCAD is. Uh, we are the CTC distributor here in Canada. Um, we have quite a rich and deep history uh, spanning 25 plus years. Um, and we are located all across Canada. I myself have been with SolidCAD for roughly about 15 years. Drew, I think you're all together with the years of, you know, a cancel on SolidCAD, I think maybe 10 plus years as well, give or take. Yeah, we start, we start to lose count because we enjoy what we do here. <laughs> so, you know, definitely uh, look, take a look at our website if you want to learn more about our history. Um, what we like to do and focus on our clients is our three main buckets, design, manage, and share. These are usually the three big challenges a lot of companies are facing in the market today. So, you know, looking at CTC Hive, that is a solution that definitely, um, you know, addresses the manage and share part of your business. Uh, we are under the Cancel Group of companies, so we are one of the big, uh, you know, companies under that big umbrella. Uh, so we do work very closely with our sister companies, uh, such as Building Point Canada, Cancel, and a few other companies uh, that you may or may not be working with. So if you are interested in some of the other, um, you know, partnerships or understanding of some of the other product and services that Cancel offer, please don't, you know, feel shy. Reach out to us and we'll help you um, make those uh, introductions to those other companies. The primary industries that we service here in Canada um, is the AC market, so architecture, engineering, construction. And then we have our other main parts of our business, which include infrastructure, civil engineering, manufacturing, and that kind of branches out into more you know, traditional manufacturing as well as advanced CNC manufacturing. And then our plant division as well, who are looking after uh, process piping, brownfield projects, PNID systems, all that type. We do offer a, an assortment of different services. Um, and we keep expanding this. So, you know, a lot of our clients rely on us to provide, you know, BIM technical assistance on their Revit, Revit platform, Civil 3D, for example. We do have a growing team of programming and customization experts as well. Scan to BIM, as well as advanced CNC manufacturing. And we always provide to all our clients um, full technical support by phone and email. So. You know, this is something we are very proud of, and uh, a lot of our clients see the, the true value within SolidCAD being able to find someone uh, in our organization who can assist them, you know, with the quality and speed that they need. We do have training facilities all across Canada. However, you know, under COVID, um, we're currently working a little bit more remotely, so we do offer full remote solutions. Um, we've actually now equipped our all our technical specialists here at SolidCAD with the remote technology so they can provide, you know, the quality uh, services that you, you know, rely and expect. So they have all the technology, whether it be Zoom, GoToMeeting, um, you know, all the camera gear in order to deliver all our training and, and professional services via remote. Some of the other products that we provide support and uh, sell here in Canada, um, if you want to learn more about these, Solutions, please uh, reach out to your uh, Autodesk uh, SolidCAD uh, representative, or you know, take a look at our website, and you know, you can submit an inquiry, and we'll find a subject matter expert to assist you with that inquiry. And then finally, just a reminder, you know, working with SolidCAD, we do provide full technical support. Uh, so you know, for all our solutions, uh, whether it be CTC, Autodesk, Bluebeam, Lumion, V-Ray, and so on, you know, feel free to use our technical support. We have the uh, in-house experts to assist you on those technical issues that you might uh, be experiencing. So with that, I'm gonna be passing the mic over to uh, my colleague, Drew Jarvis, who's now gonna take us into the CTC Hive platform and learning how to manage our content 
uh, Revit templates and standards uh, more effectively. So one second here, I'm gonna make it through. Drew, you are good to go. Okay, thanks Dan. Uh, just a quick confirmation, you can see my screen, say an agenda? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, today we're going to take a look at how we can use Hive from CTC to manage and utilize our Revit content. Uh, so we'll investigate the methodology related to utilizing a content management system uh, along with a starter project to set up our projects. Uh, we will also take a quick peek at the administration side via the web portal to see how we can manage and administer the users and groups uh, in order to uh, give access to people in our project team. So the first question, uh, what is Hive? Well, Hive is a content management system. Now this is an alternative to Windows file management and it gives you access to search facilities uh, that search more than just the name of the Revit families. Uh, so Hive can index the metadata within the family, so all the different parameters and things, and it allows you to search that data and find content based on the values of the parameters within the families. For example, you can search for 1050 millimeters and it's going to bring up any family that has any parameter with a value set to 1050. So uh, different widths of doors or windows and things like that. Uh, so it's the sort of searching that you can't do with your regular Windows file system. Uh, so content within Hive is saved on the cloud and that means that users can use it anywhere uh, as long as they have internet connection, I guess. Uh, so who here has experienced this issue, right? You go to insert a family and the first question will be, well, which folder is it saved in? Uh, then you realize that there's multiple folders that you have the content in. Maybe one's locally on your workstation from when you created a family file. One's on the server in the uh, project folder where you save the family after you loaded it into the project. And maybe there's multiple files in subdirectories on the company standards folder in the server for different versions or releases of the software, things like that, right? So which one are you meant to use? Probably the file in the company standard, I guess, but you know, we're not sure. There's so many files all over the place and you, you can't get see inside them. All you can see is the file name and uh, whatever was the active view when the file was saved. So you don't even necessarily get much information from looking at the preview image. Uh, so when you go to insert a family, you really, you, you can't tell much from that in preview image sometimes. Uh, for example, tags might be zoomed all the way out to the extents of the, um, the reference planes, or maybe it was just saved in you know, some random uh, elevation view because that was the last view you had when you saved the family. <clears throat> uh, so we can add content to Hive and we can control who can add content to Hive. Uh, which is of course important as well. One of the issues I find with companies that have tried to standardize content is that they allow too many people to save to the company folder. And therefore you're gonna get too much content saved into multiple different folders, um, just based on you know, each individual's idea of where the best place to save it is. So you know, if you are going down the route of setting up standardization for your content, um, the content that's going to be used in your projects, you really want to make sure you, you plan before you start implementing. Um, now in Hive, we can upload content into libraries and these libraries help us organize the content at the top level. Um, we can also tag files to add searchable values that are not actually within the files themselves. So maybe you're not looking for a width, but maybe you're looking for content related to customer ABC, right? So you could tag them to say, these are for use in client projects for client ABC. Um, and when you search, you're gonna get a list of all of those, which you can then filter down to the specifics. And we can load more than just component families as well. So we can load system families, we can load views. There's a whole bunch of different things we can save into the hive. Um, so yeah, if you've ever tried to load system families, it's not as easy, right? If you're load, loading a, a wall in, you, you need to basically copy and paste it, I guess, or you can use transfer project standards when you do transfer project standards, you get all of the walls and you just wanted one or two. So Hive is great at bringing in those system families. Now, one of the great things about Hive is its simplicity. Now, if you can search for something in Google or Microsoft Bing, uh, then you can find content within Hive. So a simple search will look at the family name and the metadata of that family, as I say. 
Uh, you can then filter the search results and use the detail tab to verify which one you're looking for. Once you've found the content, then it's easily loaded from Hive into your active projects. All you need to do is right click on it. And kind of cool, um, if you've ever used families with type catalogs, where you have a little TXT file and it has some of the data inside of it, um, you get a little dialog box that comes up when you load a family saying, hey, which types do you want to load? So you don't have to load every single one of them. Well, Hive actually does that for every single family. So whether there's a type catalog or not, it's going to show you a dialog box that shows you the name of all the different types within that family file. And then you can pick and choose the ones you want to load. So you don't necessarily end up loading the 16 different sizes of um, mechanical equipment that are in that family. You just get the two that you're actually going to be using. It means less purging later, means smaller file size, uh, less clutter inside of your project browser. Now those libraries are creatable and enable you to kind of uh, put things into groups. So I can be helpful in organizing family content by maybe project type or by client, as I mentioned before. Uh, so maybe you've got you know, commercial projects, you've got residential projects, you've got institutional projects. So you've got different types of content used for each of those, uh, where you can put those into different libraries and then give access to the different people that need access to those libraries. Uh, the best way to do that is through groups. So create a group, put users into that group, assign that group to the library, and therefore the users get access to that library makes it easier when you have new people onboarding, all you need to do is add them to a group and then they go into any library that uh, that group's been added to, as opposed to having to add individual users all the time and remove individual users when they don't need it. And so I did mention about the views, but yeah, Hive, Hive also gives you that ability to load views into your project. So this is akin to the, um, the insert from file command that you have. Uh, but it's way quicker. One thing I find is when a company has saved, let's say details, right? so you get 200 detail views saved into a project or uh, you know, 50 different schedules saved into a project. When you go to use that insert from file command, it gets really slow. Um, using Hive is gonna be way quicker and just really easy. You've got the search capabilities as well. Um, you get to see a lot more detail about it as opposed to what you see with the inbuilt Revit command, which is really just a, a bunch of ticks next to the names of the views. And you can't, don't even, I don't think you get a preview. Maybe you get a preview on the right-hand side. Anyway, Hive's gonna give you a better interface for loading add-in. I'll be into the software soon, just finishing off the last slide here. So talking about users and groups, um, the users and groups, along with the libraries, the tags that you can place, and also the project activity logger, they're all accessed via a web portal. Uh, the address for that is hive21.ctcsoftware.com. So once you have your user account set up, throw that into your web browser, and then you'll be able to go in there and administer uh, Hive, basically very easy. Administer from anywhere, use your cell phone, use your laptop, use your iPad, whatever. Um, now, creating groups and users is the, the way that we enable people to access our content in Hive. So we will have somebody who is in that web portal setting things up. Okay, so I'm going to switch over into the software now. This is always a very slick transfer, um, <laughs> he says sarcastically. We'll see if I can get over into Revit without too much challenge. So if I do that and I do that. Yep, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, not, not bad. Okay, so I've got myself Revit 2022 here. So I don't know if you can actually see my camera, but I'm just moving it to a different angle there. All right, so in Revit 2022, uh, at the moment I've got some uh, projects here that I can open up. What I'm going to do is just show you where Hive is, first of all. So I'm going to switch out from the recent files over to kind of the, uh, the classic interface. Here you can see the CTC software tab. I've got my BIM project suite. I've got my BIM manager suite, my BIM batch suite. Don't forget these have free tools available here, some really good ones. Renumbering tool is something that you, you want to have. Project cleaner, definitely want to take, uh, take a look at those free tools. But we're going to take a look at the CMS here, the Hive content management system. So when I load this up, it loads up as a separate application. I got this this morning. I was not feeling brave. I didn't want to update 
half an hour before a webinar. So I did not update yet, but it looks like the, the new version of Hive has been released this morning. So uh, are we updating that this afternoon? I'm gonna say no just for now. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a separate application. And so you can actually run it from Windows. Uh, so you use your Windows Start menu, you can run Hive, giving you access to adding content to the, uh, to the system, um, opening up content, that type of thing. Um, but it does make a bit more sense to have Revit open with it if we are administrating the Revit content here, which is what we're focusing on today, obviously. Now, I'll show you, uh, first of all, libraries here. So we can see I've got some libraries set up inside of SolidCAD's kind of demo hive here. And one of them I set up specifically for today is our CTC webinar. So if I go into here, I start to see the content that's inside of there. So I've got 2D detail views at the top here. I've got um, maybe another detail. I've got a wall, so that's a system family. As I scroll down inside of here, there's a water closet, so that's a component family. There's another detail view. There might be schedules inside of here. Uh, there's a door family. So, you know, we've got a, a bunch of different content available here. Different ways I can uh, look at this content. You can see over on the right-hand side, I can have my current list view. I can go into a tile view, which gives me more on the page, but less of the detail of it, I guess. And then I've got my table view. So I quite like the, the detail view, um, but I then also like to open up details tab. So what happens with the details tab is if I click on one of the walls here, for example, it shows me information about it. So I can see which library or libraries it's inside of. I can see which versions have been uploaded. So you can actually have multiple versions available. That's gonna be helpful if you don't wanna to have to upgrade the family each time you load it into a newer version of the software. So I can load in a 2019, 2020, 21, 22, load them all up into Hive. And then uh, when I go to use it, I'll just use the newest version. I'll also start to see down here, the different types available. So in a system family, we only see one type for each one. But if I go down to a component family, like the door, for example, there we start to see all our different sizes available here. So that's the sort of stuff that's gonna come up when we search. So I mentioned 1050 and look at that, 1050. So let's do that. If I come up the top here and I just type in 1050 and enter, now I get a door that has some 1050s on its width. I get some windows which have 1050 on the height there and similar for some of these others, right? So it's looking not just at the name of it, it's looking at the data inside of the file in order to, uh, to find that content. Now I've actually purposely not opened anything in the background yet because I'm gonna use uh, Hive as a way of starting a project. So I'm gonna use my company template via Hive. So my company template has the release inside the name of it. So if I put in R22 there and enter, there's my starter project. You'll notice it's an RVT file, not an RTE. So it's an RVT so that I can include work sets inside of the file. I think that's important um, in order to make sure that my links, my placeholder links are on the right work set and I can predefine any company standard work sets or client project specific work sets that I, that I need. So how do I get this to open up into Revit? Well, I simply just right click on it. And what I'm gonna do is use the load option here. So when I pick load, it's gonna come up and say, well, hey, this is a central file. What do you wanna do with this? Well, I wanna detach from central, preserving the work sets. I'm gonna click open. So that will then just open it up inside of Revit, giving me a temporary file. It's gonna be whatever the file name is, underscore detached, would be my guess. <laughs> yes, there we go. And it then tells me, hey, your placeholders, I can't find them. Okay, great. So we can go into manage links at this stage. And basically I've got these little placeholders here. I don't know what format, what discipline this, this template is, to be honest. Uh, whatever's not there, I guess. So it's a landscape one, maybe. Anyway, if I wanted to load in the architecture, I've got my placeholder. I've got my placeholder so it can be on the right work set and I can do things with it. Um, but I've also got then the ability just to say, well, okay, for this project, it is that file. So I'll click open and load that up. So setting up my project is nice and straightforward there. So I can see this building is just a simple couple of stories. I don't need these other levels that I have inside my starter template. So if I was to delete those, I'll just you know, end up with a few less views, I guess, quite a few less. 
Um, let's, let's get rid of that one, shall we? Why is that even floating around? Let's go to the Analyze tab here. Throw that back up into the Analyze ribbon tab. There we go. All right. Um, and so what I like to do with my templates, as well as you know, predefining a few levels with even some reference planes inside of here, I like to have reference planes in case I need to host things at different heights. Uh, but I very much like to use scope boxes. Scope boxes I use to define the crop region of views. I use it to define the extents of levels, the extents of grids. And so it gives me consistency. So this template has a scope box already set up. And inside of the view, for example, I can see in my architectural view here, if I scroll down to the scope box, it hopefully, uh, no, <laughs> is set to main building. Whoops. <laughs> so that's what happens when you're trying to work on a template and you don't save the latest version. There we go. All right, so they're all set up there, so that's good. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna move my grid line across. You'll notice the grid line and its properties is set to use that scope box, this one here, um, as are these reference planes, as are these levels. So basically now I just wanna kind of match this up to the building a little bit more. You know, in my template, I can never anticipate how big, how big the building's gonna be, but there you can see as I bring that in, my grid lines move down, my level markers move in, all in the right spot. However, that's only one view. So maybe I'll go to this architectural plan here. Oh yeah, that's probably why I didn't do the scope box. Yeah, look at me getting flustered. Let me go and set that to none for a minute and turn off that. At some point I'm gonna get my scope box back. There it is. All right, so now I can bring that scope box down in this view as well. And that's going to mess up that grid line if I don't put that in the right spot first. Anyway, it's the demo. There's some weirdness. It's all good. All right, we'll bring that in. There we go. So now if I link that one back to the scope box, to main building, there. All my views are using that scope box. Excellent. Okay. Well, what we're looking at here then is how do we distribute information inside of our project? So I'm going to take a step back and pretend that this is an architectural file that I'm working on. So I don't need an architectural link. I'm going to take that one and remove it. And now I'll start looking at, okay, how do I make stuff? Well, if I want to place a wall, I'll start my wall command. I'll go to my type selector. There's not much in there, right? It's a pretty, pretty clean template that I've got here. So how do I load in a wall? Well, I simply just go over to my hive and I start taking a look inside of here. So I'm just going to search for everything. And then I'm going to use my filters. So I'm going to go to filters here. You can see it's already filtered to the particular library for this demo here with the CTC webinar. But I do have access to all the different libraries inside of my company that I have access to. Um, and then down here, I can start to filter things simply by category or things like that. So I'm not doing any searching. I'm just saying, OK, let's have a look in here for walls. Uh, scroll down and I hit walls, hit apply. Now I'll get a list of my walls. And then yeah, I, any of these I decide I want to bring in, just a simple case of me, uh, I've already got brick on that. So maybe I don't have this one. Let's find out. I'm going to right click on it and load it. And you'll see it starts, was I already in that command? I think I was already in the wall command. Let me just go to my wall command again. without clicking on the screen, expert user here. Okay, there we go, exterior brick on CMU, which is the one I just loaded in. So that's brought it in from the hive. Now I'm gonna go and say, this is my exterior. I'll just simply draw a couple of lines around here and then I'll look at placing some other content. So I wanna bring a door in. I start my door command. Oh, don't have any doors in this project. I couldn't get rid of all the walls, but I could get rid of all the doors, so I did that. Do I wanna load one? No. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use Hive. So I'm going to pop out here and I'm going to clear my filters other than the webinar. And then I'll just have a look for different types of doors. So I like that 1050 thing I was looking for earlier. So let's stick with that. There we go. Here's my doors that have got 1050 in them. This one here, for example, maybe this is the one I'm looking for. I can confirm down here different things about it. I can see all this information. When I'm ready, I right click, I hit load. And as I mentioned, it's gonna give me then a dialog box that shows me the different types that I can load. So this family may or may not have um, you know, a type catalog. 
but any component project, any component family you bring in, is going to give you this functionality. So I'm just going to load those selected types. And now I'm ready to place a door. It's going to start the door command for me. And it's going to allow me to place that door into the model. Unless I click on the dimension. Brilliant. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oops. Ah. That's what I don't want to do. Something like that. Okay, let's continue searching inside of here. Uh, so the other stuff I found was some uh, details. Maybe I'll type in detail at the top and see what we got. Okay, so that comes up with a bunch of details. So these details don't exist inside my project yet. But again, right click and just load them in and we'll be able to bring these into our project. We can pick multiple, right click, load. Now, any parameters that are on them that organize them into the project browser are going to be included. I think they were electrical. Now I don't know where they are. Let's have a look. I'm still in my door command. There we go. Let's wait for that door command to get out of it. Now it's actually loading in the details. There they are. Okay. So now in my details here, I've got my mechanical ductwork gooseneck intake exhaust detail that's been loaded in from the hive along with the other one that I picked there. Okay, so nice and easy to, uh, to load those details. So loading in views, loading in schedules uh, can be taken care of. In fact, let's have a look, see if I can find a schedule here. I think there was one to do with spaces, if I remember correctly. There we go. So this is a schedule. If we take a look at our project right now and I scroll down at the moment, schedules is completely empty and it's not filtered or anything. If I go browser organization, um, you can see that it's showing all. It's not like I've hidden any of them by a filter. Uh, so back into the hive, take this one and load. And it'll bring in all of the settings for that schedule. There we go. So I don't have any spaces or air terminals at this time, but if I did, then obviously it would start populating with that information there. So you can take your standards. Don't have to leave them in your template. You leave them in hive till you need them, and then you can load them in. Now, administration of the Hive is taken care of via a web portal. So if I open up Google Chrome, and try not to uh, show you my <laughs> email. <laughs> Let's go and put in hive21.ctcsoftware.com. There Don't we worry, Drew. We'll scrub that out. <laughs> <laughs> Preparation. There we go. Look at that. Clean as I wanted it to be. There we go. So we've got hive21.ctcsoftware.com. And uh, so this takes me into the admin portal. So here we can see, for example, the different uh, users and groups. So in my users, I've got myself here listed, Drew Jarvis with my email, where I'm based, whatever. Important stuff is going to be what am I a member of? So my roles and my groups. So I am an organizational admin and I'm part of the demo group and the BIM manager group. So if I want to, I can go and add people to those groups. Um, if I took a surprise Dave with an email, if I go into Dave here and uh, go to roles and groups, you can see here I can add him to the demo set and save that. Okay. So now any, for any library that the demo group is added to, they will now have access to that. So if I go over to my CMS, this is where I can see my libraries. And so we can see here, for example, the library for the CTC webinar today. If I edit this one, this is where we have our permissions and we can see the different groups that have access to it. Right now, I've just set it up so it's just me because I really didn't want somebody coming in and messing with my library, and deleting all my stuff before. But now I'm pretty much done with it so I can start adding people to it. So I'm going to go and add a demo group to this one. So here I can search for the demo group. And so that's going to include anyone that's in there. I can tell them what they're going to be. So are they simply just consuming? Do they get to insert stuff? Or are they able to fully manage this? Are they a contributor? So different levels of... Um, of uh, status inside of here. So I'll just say they're consumers, they're going to be able to insert stuff from the library into their project. They're not going to be able to add stuff to the project. So we'll add that in there. 
save and close. Okay, so we've got our libraries. We can create new libraries up here and then start adding content to those libraries. Why don't I do that? Okay, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna make a library. So this is gonna be today's date is 2021, 20, 10, 14. Um, example library, if I can spell that. Okay, so we'll hit create. I then wanna go into my permissions and I'm gonna add myself to this because if I don't add myself, I'm not gonna find that I can add anything to it. I'll then say I'm a manager for that group. So of course I can add other groups, other users as co uh, contributors or as consumers. I think that's saved, I think it did, yes. All right. So that's a new group. I'm also gonna go and take a quick look here with tags. So tags are helpful when you don't necessarily think you're gonna be able to find the content based on its name or any of the data inside of it. Uh, so for example, the fact that this is a ABC client, right? So for tags, if I wanna add a tag, I just come into here, I create a new tag. This is gonna be a client ABC. So there's a new tag created. So got myself a new library. I should have access to it, got myself a tag. How do I add content to it? Well, it's nice and easy. I go back to my hive. And so let's say uh, I'm gonna add in some um, content furniture. I don't think I've put much furniture into this hive yet. Down here, we have add content. We can add content one file at a time, picking RFA files or any other content. I mean, Hive is not limited to Revit. We can have all of our company standards in here. We can have Excel documents, PDFs, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but I'm just focusing on the Revit things. So I can add one RFA at a time, or I can pick a folder and it will find all of the uh, files inside of those folders. Or if I have a project open and I wanna get the system families out of it, or the views or the schedules, things like that, then I'm gonna use this add Revit project elements. Right now though, I'm just gonna go and add in a few of the furniture families. I'm not gonna pick all of them. I'm just gonna pick a few. So if I go to my C drive, into program data, into Autodesk, into Revit 2021, whatever that will do, libraries, English, there we go, furniture. How do I know where this is? All right, I'll just pick these three, click open. So I get a list of the content. Up here, I can pick which library it's gonna be added to. I think I went with, I've forgotten what I called it. Shout out if you know what I called the, uh, the library. So hit, hit refresh, there we go, example library. So there's a little refresh button if you don't see it, because basically I went and did it while this um, was open. There we go, there's my library. So I'll upload it to there. But I'm also gonna tag it because I wanna be able to find this based on the fact that this is the client ABC, right? There's client ABC, that's good. Now, up here, you'll see that I also have a design app listed. Um, unfortunately, now it's gonna upgrade each one of these in order to read the metadata inside of it. So I've kind of messed that up. Anyway, let's, let's do that. So I'm gonna hit process. <laughs> Probably quicker just to, to live with that. So you can see it's using Revit in the background. It's opening up each of the files and it's, uh, it's taking a look at all of the parameters and uh, properties of those families. There's number two. And then finally, there is number three. There we go. Okay. So once that's done, Hive will give us a report at the end. Oh, okay. It will give us a uh, errors and successes. So. I got two errors and one success there. Let's just run it again. Maybe I've got some issues with my internet when I'm connected to a meeting like this. There we go. <laughs> oh, they're all done now. So if it doesn't work the first time, just hit process and run it again. Maybe I did have some sort of internet connection issue there. Hopefully I'm still connected to you all. <laughs> okay. If I go out now to my home, there's my new library. There is my content. Right. So let's say I'm not looking in just that library though. Let's hit apply. There's everything, right? So all my stuff, all my different libraries and things. Now I want to search that client. So let's look for ABC. Does that work? It does. Look at that. So there's those three items based on the fact that they have a tag associated with them, which is client ABC. So 
you know, if I have McDonald's or Walmart or whoever as a client, I can type that in there. It's going to find content to do with them. And then I can go and start filtering it based on versions and such. Okay. Um, interestingly, you'll notice that it's in two libraries. It's in the library I just added it to, and it's in the out of the box 2020 library that someone has created, apparently me, which means it's actually now available in Revit 2021 as well as Revit 2020. So it's not available in 2022 yet until I upload it in 22 format, but that's good. It means it's, it's, it's realized it's the same family and it's grouped them together, right? So the M underscore mirror ellipse, the RFA, it, it's realized they're the same content and it's given you access to one or the other there. So if I did want to load one of these in, well, simply just right click and load. And of course it's going to have to upgrade it, but it will end up in there. Oops, unless I ignore that dialogue. There we go. <laughs> that mirror ellipse definitely doesn't have a type catalog, but it does now because Hive gives it a type catalog. So let's load that in. So when I load it, it will then do the upgrade and it's ready to go. Yeah, well, can't make it in a schedule, but if I, man, I'm good at these things. If I go into level one and I hit the component tool now, there is whatever it was called. I'm not sure if that's what it was called. No, mirror ellipse. Come on, mirror ellipse, let's have a look for you. There he is, <laughs> and only the one type. So it didn't load all three of them from the project, it loaded one type. And so there you go, can add that to that wall there. Okay, so that brings an end to uh, my demonstration portion. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea about how we can manage data um, and manage content without having to overpopulate our template. So we don't have to load everything into our template. We can have a very stripped down template, admittedly as a project file, not a template file, so that we can predefine work sets and such. Uh, but then we can use our Hive to bring content in as we need it. And we're confident it's the company standard stuff because it's in the Hive. It's not just some random folder on your hard drive or on a OneDrive or a SharePoint or something somewhere, right? So with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back to Dan. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Great. Thank you, Drew. Uh, hopefully this was a good insight um, into a platform that could definitely improve your company's management of data, um, put a little bit more control on how things are moved around uh, within your Revit environment, your workflow. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, there is an email in that invitation that you reach originally received. You can also type your question here in the chat box. Um, and we will be posting this uh, video to our YouTube, YouTube channel if you did want to review it uh, later on, okay? So we'll stay on for another 30, 40 seconds to see if there's any questions. And uh, other than that, thank you and have a great day. Okay, we're good.